wanted to pivot to a topic that uh, you've written about and thought about a good deal, which is cancer screening. Um, it was sort of a, a man bites dog story when you um, were at the, AC, uh, at the American Cancer Society and started to raise questions about um, uh, screening and whether it was leading to overtreatment, mm -hmm. um, overdiagnosis, um, unnecessary testing, false positives. In other words, that, that there were negative consequences to screening. Mm -hmm. Um, as you know, um, some of the screening guidelines have raked screening back, particularly with respect to prostate cancer. Um, but uh, this summer, the United States Preventive uh, Services Task Force um, expanded the uh, population um, of people who, um, that they recommended get, get lung cancer uh, screening. Mm -hmm. Um, they lowered the age and the number of pack years. Um, so I guess I'm just wondering how you see scre cancer screening in America now. There's been sure. some adjustments, but also, you know, with the lung cancer screening, that's a significant expansion. So have, sure. are we still over screening, I guess is the... the yes. <laughs> yes, we are still over screening. Uh, it's not as bad as it once was, especially in prostate cancer. Uh, and by the way, all these themes are very linked, at least in my mind. Uh, one of the reasons I was against, um, by the way, screening, can be appropriate in certain diseases and in certain uh, populations. I was sometimes categorized as anti-screening. I'm not. I'm, I'm against inappropriate screening, and I'm for applying science to figure out what screening tests are appropriate for what populations. Uh, the uh, and the Preventive Services Task Force, by the way, has applied science, I think, very, very well. Uh, in the 1990s, when I got my reputation and people tried to say I was an anti-screener, uh, we had no studies to show that prostate cancer uh, treatment saved lives. We had no studies to show that prostate cancer screening saved lives. Remember, screening don't work unless the treatment works. We didn't even have studies to show that the treatment works. You know, the first studies to show that treatment of localized prostate cancer saved lives were published in 1998. And screening started in 1990, 1991. And we also had the, the first study to show that prostate cancer screening saves lives uh, published in 2009. Uh, we had a lot of people in the 1990s who were pushing prostate cancer screening with the hope that it was beneficial, but the knowledge that it made a lot of money. And indeed, I actually got to see many of the business plans for prostate cancer screening. I actually talked to one marketing guy who was boasting about how much money they made in prostate cancer screening. And I said, well, how many lives do you save? And he says, don't you know this stuff's never been shown to save lives? Openly admitting it. But in any event, you see, when we do things in medicine that don't work, we hurt people. And we hurt people in a number of ways. We hurt not just the people who are getting that test or getting that treatment that doesn't work and shouldn't be used but we're hurting other people who need the hospital and are crowded out of the hospital and can't get the services that they actually need. Unnecessary care causes health disparities, not necessarily in the person getting the unnecessary care, not to mention it drives up the cost of insurance and the cost of uh, a number of things. And so, uh, see, in my mind, being very strict to the science, applying screening and treatment with orthodox science, and my concern about disparities, they're all interwoven. So to just put you on the spot, 
what do you think of, of lung cancer screening, which is sort of the, the, the newest yeah. screening out there? Lung do cancer you, screening. Do, do you think we're at the right place in terms of the recommendations? I think, I, I think it's age 50. 50 and mm -hmm. 20 pack years now, you mm -hmm. should get screened. Well, Lung cancer screening is a great example of uh, uh, the problem. Every organization that recommends lung cancer screening actually doesn't recommend lung cancer screening. What every organization that has a statement positive toward lung cancer screening says is if the individual qualifies for the screening test and has access to the doctors and medical facilities that can do the screening well, and that person also understands the potential risks and the potential benefits and wants screening, they should get screening. Um, yeah, the lung cancer screening study, the National Lung Cancer Screening Study actually documented that it saved lives, but also screening was associated with instrumentation and diagnostic procedures that cost lives. Some of the people who died on the NLST didn't have cancer. Hmm. Okay, uh, but it saves lives. Uh, one of my great concerns is the NLST was done in 30 of the finest hospitals in the United States. And it was done on people who volunteered to go into that study. Uh, if I can go back to a, uh, a Watergate phrase, uh, how's this going to play in Peoria? Okay, I, I shouldn't say Peoria because they have some good hospitals there. But uh, I worry about people in non-academic settings. I worry about people in rural settings. And I wonder, is screening, is the benefit to harm ratio? for lung cancer screening going to be the same in those non-academic settings as it was in that original paper. Uh, and uh, uh, I do worry that there are some hospitals that are investing a lot of money in lung cancer screening because it can make a lot of money or potentially can make a lot of money. And they are ignoring other programs that they perhaps ought to be investing in uh, that could save more lives. By the way, uh, when I was at the American Cancer Society, we actually published a paper that uh, said that lung cancer screening, if fully implemented across the United States, uh, and by the way, we have yet to fully implement uh, colon cancer screening or breast cancer screening. They're at 60 to 70 percent implementation. But lung cancer screening, if fully implemented, and if done at the uh, uh, success of the uh, 30 hospitals in the NLST, uh, would uh, save about eight to 10,000 lives per year and cost somewhere around 1,500 lives per year. All right. Uh, yeah. So yeah. the math isn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, there are some hospitals that are shutting down navigator programs that would keep women in breast cancer treatment that ultimately would save more lives in order to establish lung cancer screening programs, which are sexy and might bring more prestige to the hospital, maybe even more money to the hospital, but it's not going to save as many lives as the Navigator program. Yeah, hospitals always think, uh, like to uh, talk about um, a big expensive machine and cutting edge and a, na a, a friendly informed Navigator is a little bit harder to put on a billboard perhaps. <laughs>